I think it is clear to believe in the power of ideas. Fresh, thank you for the Manhattan Institute. Thank you everyone for coming and welcome to this event. And I want to speak briefly. My name is John McWhorter. I'm a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute and I also write for the New Republic. And the purpose of this event is very urgent and very compact. And the way that I want to kick it off is to bring to our minds something that happened last week and what its actual implications were. Last week, our new Attorney General, Eric Holder, told us that Americans need to engage in what he called a conversation. And the conversation was supposed to be about race and, by implication, racism. And our failure to engage in these conversations, as Eric Holder put it, marks us as, quote unquote, a nation of cowards. Now, the idea that there's a conversation that we're not having in America is based on a tacit idea. And that tacit idea is, to a great extent, that what whites are supposedly so afraid of is learning that deep down they are still racist. The black person in what's being called a conversation is the teacher. Holder's call for this conversation is hardly unique to him. He's taking a line, it's a line on race that has been considered informed for the better part of 40 years. However, as of this year, a speech like Holder's qualifies as well-intentioned, but unfortunately, it's behind the times. The simple fact is that America as we know it, America in reality, America as it's going to be, will not listen to that speech anymore in any real way. And I want to illustrate that by looking at a statement from the New York Times last week by the columnist Maureen Dowd. Maureen Dowd, and this is, this is the New York Times, tossed this off at the end of one of her recent columns. Quote, we have just inaugurated a black president who installed a black attorney general. We need leaders to help us through our crises, not provide us with crude evaluations of our character. And we don't need sermons from liberal virtue-crats any more <laughs> than from conservative virtue-crats. That's her word. In the middle of all the Heimlich maneuvers required now for the economy, Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan, health care, the environment, and education. We don't need a Jackson Sharpton style lecture on race. Barack Obama's election was supposed to get us past that. Besides, the president has other issues that demand his passion. That's Maureen Dowd. That's the New York Times. And that's something that she said at the end of a column as kind of a toss off. She didn't think of it as big news. And that was her opinion. And Dowd may not be the, the subtle thinker on race that many people would prefer. But what's important is that she's representative of a common view in America, under the Obama administration in particular, that racism is no longer black America's main problem. It's not the main problem. It doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, but it isn't the main issue anymore. The rhetoric of the past has lost its effectiveness and, this is what's important, it's unclear that the fact that that rhetoric has lost its power is a tragedy. The president of America is Barack Obama. The president of America is black. And if the racism that America is all about, as some people would say, is the kind that would allow a black man to become president, that I'm afraid that the nature of the all about has become a little too abstract for me. And I suspect that that's true for a lot of other people. It's time to change the discussion. The issue is not whether there is still racism. Of course there is. 
just as after you sweep up a patio, if you bend down and look up close, there's still dirt.